So yeah, so all we're doing today is Mudbox. You guys did really well with it last week. Mudbox is very different. You're going to want to play with it. Don't you mean the week before? Yes, that's totally what I meant. And what I was saying, and I just want to say for the recording, is that um, next week we start UV mapping. And you have the head, your self-portrait, or the monster head you do. So if you get behind and don't finish your monster head assignment, you can totally UV map yourself, your self-portrait, or you can totally UV map your monster head, whichever one you want to do. Most choose the monster head because they're tired of looking at their uh, self-portrait. Um, and I was explaining to someone today that the class gets easier from here on out. Once you kind of do the self-portrait, uh, the assignments get a little easier. So the tough part is, is front-loaded, um, unless you really don't like Mudbox, which some people really hate Mudbox, but it looks like a lot of you really like Mudbox. So let's get to that. So today I'm going to go over the tools. I'm going to go over everything, uh, and then I'm going to go over some strategies. So let's get... So what we did two weeks ago was we played with the cube. Um, I'm going to offer extra credit if you do the beast or you do the head um, from a cube or a sphere instead of just shaping on to one of the base models. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you what I do with a monster head for a cube. Um, I make like a little demon head with it and I'll do a very crude job of it. I'm not gonna, you'll have some time to do that. What do you but, mean the shaping the monster head from one of the... So they have a base head. You just, whoop, you're gonna hate me because just sho it just shoves in a base head and you can, you can build the monster head off of a base of a head. Right, or you can go from a sphere, or you can go from a cube. That actually sounds easier. Right, so let's show you what I'm talking about. All right, everybody, let's get Mudbox open. Um. So when you say monster head, does it have to be? Can it be a reference to a monster? Or yes. Does it have to be a I'll I'll go all over. No, no, you can you can be. It could be Swamp Thing, it could be Frankenstein, it could be Megamind, it could be whoever. Megamind's right. a villain. There's a hair. You're splitting it. You're splitting it. All right. Um, what I wanted to first show you was a sphere up here. Um, the way Mudbox works is it really doesn't like triangles. Um, I'm going to show you this feature right now um, with Mudbox, but if you... I've selected it. There's a select tool, which I don't know if I've covered. So this tab over here on the right, there is um, object mode, and I can select an object. So when it's highlighted like that, that means I've selected that object. Um, you don't really grab faces or borders too much, unless you're doing some fancy stuff. And then you can also move, scale, and rotate. Move, rotate, scale. Um, your objects here, just like you would in Maya. The WER doesn't work. And what I did want to point out was W. Let me get off this for a second. If I hit W, you can see the subdivisions here. So if you hit, everyone hit W, make a, make a sphere or something for a second. And let me see that, that subdivision level by pressing W. Because I want to point out. Is it normal not to have a grid underneath the wall? You can be a display setting. Um, it's fine. It's going to be probably somewhere under display. Probably something to check off. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Do you have an auto that's lighting? Yeah, oh, you can delete that. And if you can't, then I. Perfect. Good. That's why I came to float. All right. Just wanted to make sure you can see the sub D's. Good. 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 And tomorrow we're going to be on Mudbox. Do you need to get in Mudbox? Uh, how do I connect the camera to the uh, thing? Um, not going to cover that right now. Um, you can spin it if you want, but we're on this dude. Okay. Pulling your legs. All right. So, Mudbox works in sub Ds, subdivisions, um, which you, you'll see the, those big, uh, larger squares plus the divided square. You're going to come across, and I'm going to address this early and then readdress it again. You're going to come across to a point where you're going to need to have more faces, right? So if I hit Shift D, 
you just saw that get subdivided even more and it said level two, 6,000 polygons. So that, that was shift D, shift D. If I do it again, it goes even more. This is like smooth in Maya. Do you guys remember doing that in Maya at the end of 420? So now I have a lot of pixels. I can actually work with less and less. I can kind of up and down. I can increase and decrease my sub Ds I can do that. by using page up and page down. And the hotkey, if you're on a laptop that does not have a page up and page down is, I believe, either option up down, alt up down, or I'm forgetting. If you don't have the page up, page up down. I have Is it? Is it? Oh, yeah. The right right. Um, sometimes it's easier to work when it's less clunky. When it has less sub Ds, it'll, it'll perform a little bit better. Um, Maya can get, I mean, excuse me, Mudbox can get very processor intensive and RAM intensive. So you want to make sure that uh, you're very aware of your sub D level. Definitely save, save often. And um, don't go over like six. Like you'll see some videos where they crank it up to seven or something. That's a lot of faces. Actually, my video, I crank it up to like five or six. I think it's pretty hectic. Question. Yeah. So I'm testing it, but I only go up to one. Oh, sh did you hit shift D first? So you first have to hit shift D. Shift what? Shift D shift for divisions. And that will add a new subdivision layer to it. And then you can kind of pulse as you're modeling and you want to see it in a, a cruder version, you can page down and you can page up. So shift D. Shift D will add some. So if I keep spamming page up, I can only go to level three. But let's say I wanted to create a level four. Now I've just created more geometry though. Question? Yes. What if I wanted to get rid of them? Um, you hit page down and then later when you export, you say export at current subdivision level. So you kind of hit, you go back to page down and it's there. And then you can, when you export it to bring it back into Maya, um, you can say export at current level. We'll get there. All right. All right. So we're going to be messing with sub Ds a lot. And we'll be reviewing all these tools. So um, to re... We, we introduced them very quickly at the end right before break just to kind of have some fun and you guys did remarkably well um, so let's talk sculpting tools again and let's go over that list one more time because I'm sure it'll be good all right over here on the right oops I'm on painting over here on the right there's a sculpting option and you can sculpt in layers so what you could do right is you could come here and oops, get off that. Get on my slime. What's going on? There you go. I want to have you deselected. Get off of here. There. Sculpt. Doop. Good. So you sculpt along, get some basic shapes, whatever it might be. Um, you can add another layer. So let's just say, let's make, pretend I'm making a Pokemon or something here, right? So I've made this weird thing. I can add another layer. And this layer I could call, you know, details or something. And I'll walk you through that with the, with the animal as well that we're going to play with. Um, and I can pull this out. Yeah, so just any layer right here. This, this that button, right? So I can hit new layer, call it whatever I want. Um, couple things I can do. If I don't like that layer, I can get rid of it. I can also scale down this layer. So this is very Photoshop-y. I can actually change the opacity of that layer of what I'm working on. And I can add more or do more. Right? Pull this out. And then I can pull this up and it goes bigger. Or so I, I, was, I, was paint, I was sculpting on 10% with that layer. And then I crank it up to 11 right so just to kind of remind and then if I want to get rid of it I don't like that I can just drag it or hit trash and I'm back to my original sculpt right 
So a couple of things there. What I wanted to point out was we're going to do layers. Pew, pew. Pew, pew. Um, we are going to do... Here we go. Our strategy is going to be we're going to make a sculpting layer or the base layer is going to be sculpted. We're going to make a new layer, add details. Then we're going to make another new layer and add textures. Then we're going to make another new layer, call it asymmetrical. You know, give it some bumps and bruises on other sides. Um, and then that would be it, right? Uh, you could also combine other objects too there. So that's going to be our strategy. So I want to review all the tools and then walk you through the strategy, all right? Then you're going to repeat that strategy with the monster head with the head there, all right? Okay, so let's see. Talked about the creating meshes. Command Z can sometimes run slow. If you're modeling something and you hit Command Z and it doesn't take right away, click off of it. Click off your character and that usually bumps it back in. You'll see me do that in the video that's posted with this assignment is um, if you see me hit, you'll see me hit Command Z, get frustrated, and then click off here. And that does it. So sometimes you're brushing. Yeah, the brush. Yeah. Size. Yep. Guess what? Good question, Ben. Because guess what? Let's we'll just skip the blue and green here, right? So the tool, the two hot keys you're using the most, Jamar. The two hot keys you're going to use the most, B and M. B M. Right. M is for strength. Don't know why. B is for brush. Um, and so what you're going to do is with every tool, any tool, I'm only going to really demonstrate sculpt, maybe a little knife, a little grab, maybe pinch, maybe foam. That's pretty much all I'm going to be doing. You could play with the other ones. Feel free to. Um, so if I wanted to make a bigger grab, I'm going to hold B and just left click and I get a, a larger size. Let me double click it. Right. What does it mean by tool strength? All right, so tool strength is how much it's going to push or pull it in. So if I have a weaker brush, I'm going to pull it out and look how it's not significantly pulling it out. Uh, tool strength is M. Yeah, for strength. Um, and then pull it out super big, and now when I click, it's going to get really big. If any of you have styluses, it will be pressure sensitive. So your strength of your brush will be pressure sensitive if you wind up using a stylus. All right. This smooth tool I say we use, but I don't use it with the tool. I use it by holding down shift key. So hot keys I'm using are B, M, shift, and control. I'll tell you what control does in a second, right? So shift will smooth my action. So if I, if I do a lot of sculpting like that and I have this weird little ripple in the middle here because it's mirrored and all that stuff, I'm gonna hit shift and I can kind of just smooth that out. Um, you're gonna see a lot of demo, the demo videos I've included, uh, there's a lot of, they do an action and then they immediately kind of shift over it and kind of smooth it out. So that they'll do an action and then they shift smooth it out, right? And so far, all I've been doing is pulling with sculpting. Control will give you the inverse. So if I hold control, it goes inward. And that's way too strong. So let me just sculpt that in, sculpt that down, hold control. So that's pushing it inward. This is how you can make eye sockets, um, all sorts of stuff, right? So regular click goes out for sculpt. Control goes in. It's the opposite for knife. So if I switch this to knife here, make a smaller brush and decide to cut. Now, here's what I'm talking about where you get this weird, funky result. This means you probably need more sub Ds. So if I hit page up, the cut looks a little, there we go. Looks a little sharper and I can smooth that out. So cut goes inward, but I can also hit control and it'll go the opposite direction. So, These are great to build scars or fangs or all so sorts of neat things. When you're using sculpt, you use control, that pushes in. But if you're using knife, knife literally cuts in. Mm -hmm. It's always invert function. So if I hit control, it's this key right here, invert function. Someone might be asking how I got there. If you double click your tool, you'll get here. Try not to go adjust your size here and then check and then adjust your size here, check. 
really get in the habit of using B and M, right? So B is this, this meter right here, and strength is this meter here, right here. You can mirror local. Uh, in the video, I actually accidentally make my character or my monster more asymmetrical, and then I can't use local. I can't use local X, so I had to go to, to world X. Hello. What does invert function mean? We're just reviewing from last, huh? What does invert function So that's, they don't say like push pull, right? So sculpt is a pull, right? So the invert is a push, whereas knife is a push. So okay, then invert yeah. is a pull. So invert, invert is control, the control key. Ah. Oh, if you hover over it, it tells you. Look at that. that. That's why I was wondering if there was an option for it. Why bother putting a key for it? So they like um, you or know, just maybe to make it easy to switch back and forth. Or this is also you know not not a not a stylus, but a what's the screen with the drawing on it? Oh, drawing tab. The, whatever those drawing tablets, you, you just you might not be pressing your keys that much. You just move your little pen. So it's also meant to be very touchy, right, with the pen tools. Let's see. We'll talk about stamps when we get to the texture layer. For the knife, um, for making the incision, does so the whole control thing work for that too? Like yep. making the incision, like literally. So inward? Yeah. Control outward. That's what I was saying. So it's the same with the sculpt. Yeah. No, sculpt goes in. Sculpt goes out. Sculpt goes out. Ooh, I'm gonna get on sculpt. Sculpt goes outward. And then use control, control goes control. inward. And for knife, it's the, the opposite. opposite. Right. Grab is gonna be grab is a little different. I'll explain grab in a second. There you go. Grab's meant like a warp. Do you guys see? I'm using grab right now. Grab is like a warp. So sculpt adds some some volume when I sculpt. Grab manipulates and kind of warps what I'm grabbing. So there's a slight difference. Foam like adds a lot. Oh, let me get the foam. Foam adds a lot of, oh, I'm on a stamp. Let me turn off that stamp. Foam builds. So foam can add a lot more volume into it as I brush out. It's building a lot more volume into there. That's what Foamy does. Does that make sense? And then Shift for smooth. Doesn't matter what tool you're on, Shift always smooths. All right. Let's see what else. What else did I need to make sure I mention before we start playing with the beast? Shift smooth, control inverts, B makes the brush bigger, M makes the strength uh, stronger. You, ah, this tab, the select move tab is, oh, I already went over that. Move, scale, rotate, perfect. And if you wanted to do a quick move or a quick scale, uh, X middle mouse click. Does a quick move, X right click does a quick scale, X middle mouse click gives you a quick, X left click gives you a quick rotate if you need to twirl it. Sorry, what was all that again? It's X and You don't have to know that one at all. That's like, that's me showing off. Um, X up, left mouse button, X middle mouse button, X right mouse button does move scale and rotate, but it's all three at once. There's no like control. So if you want to do something a little more precisely, click, translate, and then move it the way you want to move it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. We ready? Yeah. Ready to sculpt a beast? So. Can I sculpt the head? Say what? Can I sculpt an Easter head? An Easter head? Yes. What's an Easter head? Let's save that one for the mon. Is that a monster head? So yeah, we're going to do two things. I mean, it's not a monster head, but... No. So they thought of it when they were making it. There's two there's two assignments. I want you to make the the end game is to have a face. Another face that could replace your self portrait. So eyes, mouth, nose ish, if you want to give it like a Harry Potter Slytherin nose. Not and Slytherin. Not normal right? human. Not normal human, right? Uh, that's advantageous in Mudbox, right? Because you're gonna make some you might make some sloppy mistakes. This is why we call it monster, right? So when you when you mess up with the knife, but oh, he's got a scar now, right? A lot of happy mistakes are going to happen in Mudbox, and that's going to be fine, right? So not normal human and not normal animal. Yes, 
We do the animal just as a war it's kind of a let's get some control over this before we try to do something a little bit more serious. So, the f so just know that you have two things to make in Mudbox. Um, we're going to make a some sort of animal and then we're going to make a head. Does that make sense? Right. Everyone on board? Like right now or are we only doing the monster right. today? We're doing the beast. I call it the beast Can it be a today. Dinosaur? Yes. Whatever animal you want to make, we're going to make right now. So I'm going to hit File New. So I'm just, I'm just clarifying both projects now because Krista was like, oh, can I do this head? So we'll do that next. So if I hit File New Scene, you can start with one of these base models. So the head, we're all going to start with a basic head. And then we're going to manipulate that. That's going to be your homework assignment. Um, I'm hoping at around... 8.30, I get you guys started on it, and then I guys send you off, all right? Wait, I'm getting a little confused again, sorry. Yeah. So, well, our, our, our assignment is to make a beast head, and we can either start with either nope. of these models. Nope, nope. Your homework is to make a monster head. Okay. What we're going to do in class right now is some sort of monster animal type thing. You so, lost me again. all right, in class, right now, we're going to turn in today. A monster. We're making two a, monster heads? Not a monster head. Just a monster. A bull. So don't use this right now. Okay. This is where I'm getting at. Don't use this. Use the bull. Use the reptile. Use the T-Rex. If you want to use a tree stump, you can. <laughs> Extra credit. Right? Extra credit if you start with a sphere or a cube. So today, right now, it's set to do at 9.45. We're going to go pretty fast. I'm going to play with a reptile. If you want to follow along with me, I'm going to do a reptile, right? If you want to, you're like, dude, I'm going to make a bull. If you're like, I want to make a leopard, you can either try taking a bull and trying to squish a few things around, um, or you can take a cube and try to pull it out into some sort of leopard shape. So today, right now in class, you're making a four-legged or five-legged or 12-legged creature, something that's not a head, but monstrous. Beast. That's why I call it beast versus monster. You get me now, Ben? So you want us to make something multiple limbs, or multiple limbs is just a choice? Just make, yeah. So I'm going to make it. I'm going to start with a reptile. Boop. The lizard. All right. Everyone with me? Let's save. So make a lizard and let's make and save it right now and call it Beast Basic. Something like that. So Ben, remember I'm a fan of us doing stuff together. So that's the beast. And then sending you off on your own to take what you learned for what we did together with the beast to do on your own with the monster. Does that make sense? All right. So this is the beast is the lesson. The monster head is the project. Does that make sense? Yeah, they're both separate. What happened was you guys were so good with your practice that this is going to feel a little repetitive because you guys were really onto it. So, um, Start with the animal shape. Your goal is to get well beyond it. Your goal should be um, something that looks nothing like this by the end, right? So don't, don't just make an iguana, right? We're gonna, I'm going to try to make a there. I'm going to try to make that dinosaur that looks like a, like a tank, a tank type dinosaur. I'm going to do a very bad job of it. Ankylosaurus? Ankylosaurus, yep. That's a, I picked the toughest name for the Not dinosaur. Really. You can do a dragon and see if you can turn it into a, to a, I mean, you can do a T-Rex, see if you can turn it into a dragon. So you can turn this into a dragon. Can you turn this into a flying squirrel? Right? Doesn't have to be a lizard. It's a, this could be a mouse. You, you shave off some of these, these things here, you can, you can be a mouse. All right. So pick an animal, any animal. And we, the, the whole point of calling it beast-like 
is is so that you know you make your little happy accidents. It's meant to groove out. All right. Step one: save. Everyone save. Good. All right. By grabbing, pinching, sculpting, you want to reshape it. Don't think about adding eye sockets yet. Uh, no, don't think about like adding the, the details. Don't think about adding the horns and the nails and the claws and the scales. Just try to get your basic, basic shape. Okay. That's what we're going to do first. All right. Chances are we need to add a few sub layers, subdivisions, right? So let's just start off by hitting shift D. Boop. And if you don't see the, the if you like the lines, so me as a teacher, I like having the lines so you see when it gets pixely or you see when it gets triangly and gets a little too sharp. So I like to hit W. Some people hate seeing that stuff, so they turn W off. So I'm just, W will make those. So I'm gonna add one more subdivision layer. I reserve the right to get another one in there. So right now this is two levels down. It's divided in half and then it divided in half, right? All right. Let's start sculpting. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want this body to be to be bigger. I'm going to double click on sculpting. I'm going to grab this, make a nice big strong pull, maybe make a bigger brush and I'm going to pull this wide. The key to Mudbox is nice. Just keep adding, keep building off of it. And then if you notice, you get like a little kink there, right? Shift for smooth. So after I do a little sculpting, I usually smooth it out. I'm gonna pull it and then maybe I wanna grab a little. So what I'm trying to do here is make the, and you do whatever you want. Please don't copy me. Please, please you make your own monster. And then shift. So shift kind of, re shift is similar to relax. So when, when I pull or grab stuff and it kind of gets, you, you can see the mesh happening and then shift relaxes that, right? You're definitely gonna need to, to look around. Definitely change your view and kind of keep pulling and pushing. Think of it like building a candle. So uh, it's different than Maya, right? This is instead of extruding a layer and pulling out really far, you're just, you're just you're doing a slow additive model to it. I'm gonna get down here. I'm gonna sculpt. Let's get some foam. I'm gonna hit foam here. Constantly evaluating my brush size. I'm constantly evaluating my strength. Try not to get locked into one strength. Okay, and then we'll smooth. So foam is like, so I'm gonna, I don't know if I like this. It's like taking a straw and like sticking it in the clay and like blowing in it. That's what foam is like, except you're blowing more clay into it. It's not hollow. There's my little Let's try to get this shit, get in there. And that's way back. And I can always, I can actually go to smooth and then decrease the strength on smooth if it's if it's annihilating my work too much. I can go to my smooth tool and kind of, there we go. There we go. Yes. Yes. All right. Okay. Well, let's add some foam there. Change it, bro. Oh. Oop. All right. 
A lot of clicking today, guys. Okay, add some foam. And if you're worried about learning everything, feel free to try them all out. Um, you can get away with only sculpting and smoothing. You could probably do everything you want to do with sculpt and smooth. So if you understand that you have, ooh, I just it's turned off. Cancel. Undo. I just turned on a mode. Oh, that's way too strong. Yeah, I kind of like it. Happy little accent. Now I got this like rhino. Turn it off. Oh, there it is. There, go back. Go back. If you right click and hold, you get these options. I never talked about this last week. Uh, I accidentally clicked off smooth smooth shading to make it look more like one mode. And then you can get, someone got locked out of their perspective view. So you have your top view if you needed to. Ooh, that's gnarly. Smooth. All right. Switch view perspective. So the reason also why we're doing the, the beast is because it just takes a while to get used to these controls. Our end game is making a really cool head. So typically when I do this and I'm teaching this, I get two reactions. Why didn't we learn this sooner? Or I get the, I hate this, I never want to do this ever again. Who's in the first camp? There. <laughs> I just got the jam. Some people are like, oh my God, I hate this. Please, can we stop? And then other people are like, we should have been doing this the whole time. Which camp are you? I should have been doing what the whole time? Sorry. Mud box. Oh, mud box. Oh, yeah. I, um, I enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. My box will get very ha unhappy when you have it. It'll like let you know with some red dots. Uh, it really tries to avoid triangles. And when you get to these these pointy bits, usually that means you want to add some subdivisions. So I'm, I'm making those really, I'm intentionally making some bad spots to talk about subdivisions. Okay. This big mess over here. And how to fix those. 
So I'm making, I'm making a really bad space right here. And hopefully it doesn't crash. In case you're looking at mine going, what the hell is he doing? I'm trying to make a space where you can see some problems that would occur. Fun things to do is make sure you're in mirror and you can kind of, right? You can pull out, make the tail different. Give them some spikes or ball. This is way too strong. Um, you can smooth the tip. So if you go to smooth here, or you can try relaxing it. Um, that might make it a little less jagged when it gets to the end. It might be that you, if you hit W and you don't have a lot of small lines, it might mean that you need to hit shift D and kind of add some subdivisions. That will gentle it up a little bit. Right, so if you, if you got some jagged parts, Ready to add some details? Or no? More time? Let's see here. Bigger brush, bigger strength. Yes? Oh, I thought you had a hand up. How do you Control. Control will push it in or right, do the opposite of whatever the opposite direction of what the brush is doing. Instead of sculpting, it's... It's kind of... Yeah. 
reducting. Way too strong. Oh, that's really big. Come on. Come on. <gasps> They're no longer symmetrical. I'm really just messing that up. Alright, that's fine. Get that a little sharper. Too strong. If what you are modeling is turning into something you did not plan, uh, you are totally in the right space here. I didn't really plan anything. I was Good. Just going with the flow. All right. Good. Oops, smooth. I don't even know what I made. Okay, we're about to shift gears here. All right. Couple of things to point out. If your subdivision level isn't too high and you have these triangles, I know Ben, I, I told you don't retopo. This is a mess right here. I did that intentionally. Um, if you needed to clean up the model, sometimes this will crash, sometimes this won't. Um, but notice like this face is huge, right? You want to try to have everything kind of be like an even size facing. So if you needed to, to, to fix this, um, you could try re-topology. Definitely save it. 
I've crashed the computer on my demo video. I crashed the computer just today. Um, but I can go here to mesh and choose re-topologize and hit new operation. Rebuild subdivision levels is also another trick. Oops. Sorry, it has multiple sub oh, sorry. Doo -doo. Um, so I can go here and choose mesh, retopologize, new operation. Um, target base face count, face uniformity. Let's just see what happens. Ignore the errors and continue. Doesn't like those things over there. Doop, doop, doop. 4%. Oh. Push through it. Push through it. It's not a good sign. I did too much. Oh, 5%. Oh, oh. might be going. Let's see what happens. So once again, what, what I did was I did mesh retopologize. What's going to happen is, what I think is going to happen is these big fat faces up here are going to become more um, in line with the, the face pattern here. It's going to try to redistribute. Like here, the, they're very dense. Here, they're not so dense. So I believe what Mudbox is trying to do, and it's probably getting a lot of problems. I went to 10%. Let's see what happens. May crash. Come on. Come on. I hit save, right? I knew it. Damn it. It's okay. Jamar, the question you asked me, I'm actually going to demonstrate when turning in this guy as well. So, if you didn't figure it out, I will review it when I get to turning this guy in. It's still at 10%. Come on. I think it's toast. Oh, 50%. Yes. So, it takes a while. 17%. Still thinking. Still cooking. You want to check creatures in the meantime? That's a great idea, man. 18%. Ooh, very good. Excellent. Are we ready for the next layer? I have answers, yes. Let me just do, let me just stop the recording. Get that. All right, so sculpt the basic shape. Um. And now, I'm just going to ignore that for right now. Instead of trying to fix it, I'm just going to deal with it looking like that. Um, so you have your basic shape of your creature. So you definitely want to make another layer. And this is so that when you give yourself the eye sockets and the, the mouth and the fingernails and the horns and whatever other little details you're going to be adding, this is... Um, a way to just kind of preserve your main shape and then go ahead and start adding more. Make sure, making sure that the detail layer is selected. So, for example, I'm going to give a little eye socket right here. I'm going to go to Sculpt. I'm going to hit B. Strength's too much. Right? And kind of... Oops, wrong way. There. See, there. My freeze doesn't work. Uh, bro. Ouch. All right. You saved it, that, right. That back, I did. Let's just get back, get back to something performative. All right, so, uh, yeah, always, I'm just gonna do it again. All right, so, shifty, shifty. Let's go back here. All right, so I make a new layer. One more shifty, shifty. D, hit W, where I'm at. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna make a new layer. Oh, I'm on paint, excuse me. Sculpt, boop, okay. So this one's my detail layer, just to get back here real fast. And now I'm going to, oops, get on sculpt, get off select, excuse me, derp, on sculpt, and too far, too strong, way too strong. 
control. There we go. There's my little eye socket. Smooth that a little bit. All right. Shift. Holding shift will shift will always go back to smooth, which is nice. Right? Um, for my mouth, maybe I want to make this more like a beak. Undo, undo. Make this a little bit bigger, make it a little stronger. Pull this out. Oh. Nope, too strong. Get more beak like smooth. Shift for smooth. I think I like this little bird tie. And then for like the, the mouth, maybe I'm like a mouse slit. I want to make it really small. Um, maybe add a few more layers. Let's see, I'm on my blit knife. Woo, really strong. Something like that. Let's see how that works. Ah, oh, go back here. There you go. Smooth that out. Get that knife there. Okay. There. Give it a little nose slit. Shift for smooth. So details, I like to use the knife. I'll also use sculpt, right? Um, give it a little fingernail. Give it a little, you know, fingernails is, is a big detail, but those are some nice details getting added. Um, oh, I was on the wrong. Oh, I added a sub. When you get to these new layers, you can no longer, you can only use page up, page down. You can't use shift D. Um, so once you hit, once you add a new layer, shift D will only work on the base layer. You have to use page up and page down for your layers on um, the layers that you add. Okay, so this layer is dealing with the geometry that you had when you made the layer. So if I hit page up, right, and I go to the fourth, it's no, I can no longer access that detail layer. If I make a new one, I, I'm good, right? So this one is stuck at three and it even says three. All right, if you don't like something, you can delete it. Oops, you hit trash and that detail has gone. Can I undo that? There you go, and it's back. All right, so yeah, so the idea is that you wanna, you do a big, large brush strokes with your sculpt tool. Next layer, add some details that you like, and you just keep going, keep sculpting. This one, I'm definitely using more knife. I can give it, let's see, what do I wanna give this guy now? I'm gonna sculpt a little more up here on the top. Maybe some plumage. Sarah, if you missed it, I had a crash. Oh. <laughs> Something like that. Shift, shift for smooth. Oh, I want to do. Those bearded dragons have those like gill things. Good. Okay. And I want to, th this is the quote unquote lesson. So some people go really hard on the beast. Uh, the, the project, the one I do want you to go hard on is the head, which we're going to get to in a second. All right, so now we got a feel for the detail layer. I'm gonna I'm gonna skip ahead in the lesson, and then let you cook for a while, and then you have a break. So you can keep adding layers. So one layer could be detail, another layer could be uh, texture. So if you wanted to try to give yourself some lizard stamps, I can again add another new layer, boop, right, and I can call it. All right, and then um, 
The one thing I haven't talked about is stamps. So stamps can be, if I wanted to find, they give you some default stamps. You can build some. We're not going to get into that in this class. You can download some. Um, and so you can add a stamp if you wanted to. Um, but if you wanted to find some textury that something textury that you want to use, let's give him, let's try that one. Um, and I've added the stamp to my sculpt tool. So remember that if your sculpt tool is behaving weird, remember you have this, this stamp and there's a bunch of settings that you can play with stamping. You can even randomize it. I actually want to rotate it. I'd love if I get it diagonal. Can I get it diagonal? No. I thought I could. It's okay. Um, we'll give them so notice I can... Look what, look what my sculpting tool is doing now with its strength is I'm adding this texture and I'm doing it on a layer, right? So I'm giving him this, this scaled look rather than, that's looking way better than I thought it would. I was worried, there we go. So again, small brush strokes. And again, this is all one layer. So if you experiment and you're like, eh, I don't like that. Or if you're like, oh, it's a little too much, right? I can kind of tone it down a little bit even, right? So stamps are very powerful. They're very fun to use. Um, you can apply a stamp to sculpt. You can also apply the stamp to, where do you go? Get on there. It's looking good, All right? So that's stamps. Uh, feel free to experiment. You can even go crazy on like something super textured, like this this coral pattern or something. Um, it doesn't have to be a stamp that you feel like is applicable. Like I'm using coral. You can try a leaf pattern, even a rock pattern, um, and you change the strength or you make it random. Play with these settings a little bit; it'll look it'll look way different. I want to get these guys in. All right. Does everyone thumbs up if you get layers? Yeah, thumbs up if you get stamps. Cool new feature. All right. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna get to right before finishing, and then call it a break. And then we come back. We're gonna we're gonna take some time to work. You're gonna have a work slash break. Um, just let me talk about asymmetrical. So another fun thing to do because it's a monster, right? Um, is make another layer, especially if you're doing stuff that's asymmetrical. Make another layer. Turn off your mirroring, right? And then maybe I'm going to pull down a small, oh, oh, turn off. If you hit off right here, your stamp goes off. So if, don't get stuck on stamps. And then I'm going to make it really small, and really strong. Let's see if I can give this guy like a snaggle tooth or something. So yeah, oop, and let's grab it and pull it down. Come on, yeah. Shift for smooth, there we go. Give these little, and then maybe like a goblet. Like a little gobbler. This is way too strong. Maybe a little bit bigger. There, and it's a little asymmetrical, which makes it look good. Give him, and then maybe this side, give him a, one of those things. What are these things called? Who has chickens? What is that called? Thing that flops over the chicken's beak. So I've, I've done another layer asymmetrical, especially the asymmetrical layer. Make sure you're in a layer, because usually sometimes you really fail and you just want to start over. Well, there you go. Something like that. Shift for smooth. All right. So have some texture, 
have something asymmetrical, have some details, there's no way of me knowing if you've used layers or not. There's going to be no way of me knowing if you've used layers or not. So, um, there you go. All right. No, that's that. I was about to say, let's take a break slash work session. So it's 740 right now. Let's go to 805 where you're breaking and working. So break and work at your own bit. We'll talk about turning stuff on at 805. Here is the fun part. For those that, and Crystal, your answer might be for the wing making. Um, this might be your answer. Okay. Open up Maya. But we're learning, but we're learning Linux. Um, there is a way, let me make a new scene even. New scene, sure. So, in my world, I come from a film background, and you have Premiere, After Effects, and Photoshop. And you can just transfer files between the three, and you make a fix in Photoshop, and it gets updated in Premiere. That's kind of what happens here in Mudbox in Maya. So I can select something and I can. Um, Do we have to open Maya or yeah. can just send it to Maya and it open? It, it's better to have Maya open. Right? Open an empty scene or. Empty scene, yeah. And eventually we're going to send it in there to Play Blast. And so, so we're almost done. So when you feel like you're at a good place, um, what I'm going to show you is sometimes it's, it's better deleting, deleting mesh, big moves with geometry, uh, sometimes doesn't, um, work. For example, um, these feet here, there is a way to delete stuff. Um, it just, it, it gets complicated. So I, I have to choose face. It's sloppy. So I choose these faces and hit delete. Um, it gets, it gets complicated. So. Sometimes it's better to ship things between Maya and Mudbox. And that's that's actually kind of the intent. So here's Mudbox, right? I'm gonna go to this, this select move tool here. I'm gonna ship it into Maya. So I'm gonna go to file, send to Maya. And let's, let's if Maya is open and you have a scene, you could, you could select it to the current open scene. Let's try that. Um, now, you get this option. Send meshes at the current level. That's going to be a very high polygon mesh. Or send it at the base level. I'm going to do the base mesh level instead. Boop. And then... Give it a second. Give it a second. There it is. And it's so big, right? Um, so it's a very, very... The, the, the scale between Maya and Mudbox is, is huge. But let's say I didn't like these little fingers on my model here. I can go to face. I'm going to select some fingers here. Do you guys know about the shift alligator? Shift alligator climbs and opens up the selection. So if I get a few faces and shift alligator, I can climb it. It's kind of hard to see with this, this brown. So shift period if you want. I'm sorry. It's the alligator mouth. Greater than, less than. Boop. Right? So I'm just deleting something I don't want. So in Christo's case, you can kind of really expand those wings very quickly. And now I got this gap. Uh, Mudbox will not be happy about that gap. So I'm going to close it. So I'm going to, we know this trick. What happens if Mudbox catches you with that gap? Um, it'll be red and look really funky. I, I, uh, I've had so many crashes, I want to do it right before I do it wrong. <laughs> How about that? Um, I'm, you're, 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 you're moving fast and breaking things as Facebook would say. So good job. Um, yes, I just quoted the Zuckerberg. All right. So I'm going to select each one here and remember this trick, right? Bridge. Boop. That didn't do it. What happened? One. I can just extrude and merge them though. Let's just do that. Since 
Why didn't bridge work? One, two. Oh, because I'm on symmetry? Turn off symmetry. Let's try that again. Here, here. Oh, come on. I could also fill hole and cut. Let's just fill hole and cut. Mesh, fill hole. What's going on? Mesh. You're embarrassing me in front of the class, Maya. Nope, that didn't look good either. All right, I'm going to extrude. Oh, do you know what? I know why. Fine, I'm going to go to a pen polygon. There's other tools I know how to do this with. So I go to pen polygon. Let's do this. Get in there. Here to get in there. Undo, enter, undo, undo. There. You go. One more time. This guy to this guy to this guy. Fine. One more time. This time an extrusion versus target weld. Can we get out of here? Do it the way I want to do it. Here. Two. Oh. Come on. Two. Three. Bear with me. Four, five, extrude, pull them down, target weld, right? Remember that? Doop. We can do it that way. Doop. So we're gonna come back. Fine. We've target welded. Uh, looks like these are backwards. So if you see a black face instead of the color. You going to reverse it. So you get a mesh display reverse. That's back to normal. Repeat with this side. That I could have been using mirror. But let's just be done. One, two, three, four, five. And extrude. Command E. Pull it down. Target weld. And we're done. So we've chopped off our feet. Going in the same direction each time, so the symmetry remains. And done. Okay. Face, reverse them in case there's a problem. Must display reverse. Excellent. Oop, missed one. Must display reverse. Yes. Oop, missed another one. Must display reverse. Perfect. Good. Huzzah. All right. I can hit save. Call it lizardy. Lizard chicken. Save. Um, and now I can go send to Mudbox. Oops. Get object mode. Select it. Oh, I can just hit update. Excuse me. Down here below, I can hit update. Take a breath. Hit update. Go back to here. <sighs> I didn't like it. There's something I didn't like. Something in my hand I didn't like. I'm gonna say keep all. Import. Oh, fine. I can also send with a as a new scene. It just worked right during break. I did the back. You guys all saw the back foot. The back foot's still there. So I'm not sure what I did differently. So the back foot I did as a test before break, and now it didn't do it on the first break. Not sure what happened. Anyway, uh, it doesn't matter because I can just do this now. I can go file, send to a new scene, or I can update the current scene. Still doesn't like it. Delete this mesh. All right, let's try one more time. Go to my, uh, well, shoot. Just nothing's working. I'm confused. What are we doing right now? Um, I was trying to show you how easy it is to just hop between Maya and here, which I did right before break, just to kind of test it, and it was working fine, and then send to a new scene. Don't save. I'll save. Save that. Yep, and there's some sort of problem with those new toes right there. So I'm not sure what happened, um, but you can transfer stuff in and out. So maybe it'll work better for you. It worked fine on the back feet. I'm not sure what I did on, on those. So I'm gonna try it one more time. Bear with me. Let's do this guy. Oops, sorry. And where did I save it? 
Uh. Sorry, guys. That's right. Pull series. Nope, nope, nope. There it is. Is this not it? Sorry. You're seeing, don't save. Come back. Where did I save it? Lizard. Lizard chicken. Why aren't you opening? Oh, come on. There we go. All right. So what I was trying to show you was to get it over to Maya. Let's have a new scene over here. File, new scene, don't save. Send this over, select it. Let's see if I can do it right this time. File, send to Maya. Cause this is how you're gonna turn, this is how you're gonna play blast it too. So I'm gonna send it to a new scene. Send the base model, which will get me. The current, you could, okay, if you send the current, I'll show you that too. It's going to be huge. I managed to do it. Yeah. Uh, when you select it, it'll be like super dense green. Let's just delete one set of faces and see what happens. Boop. 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 All right. And now I'm going to go to Edge, whoop, Extrude, pull one down, Mesh Display Target Weld, right here. All right. Fill that hole. Multi-cut. Enter. See, see how this is supposed to be full circle? Do you see where I was going with this? Mesh fill hole. It's all the skills you've been doing. Um, multi cut. That was the attempt. Yes, ready. Oh, there you go. Gonna delete this stuff. Delete this stuff. Oop, oop, oop. Delete that stuff. Everything's looking good. All right. Save here. Lizard again. What happens when I update that model? Do you want to, oh, cancel, go back to object mode, update. Ah, it doesn't like that. Okay, so it's not liking something in the import, keep all, import. Boom, 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 processing the layers. There you go. Um, that's more like it. So, it, Christo? Christo? You watching? What happens when you don't, Maya doesn't like something? It turns out like that, but you can take the smooth tool, make it, uh, maybe not that strong, and smooth it out. So, you get this weird, funky cut that it didn't like, but if I get to smoothen it, I can kind of reduce that. You see that? All right. Smooth. Go back to smooth. Oh, get off that. Go back to smooth here. All right. Come on. This is way too strong. It's okay. And smooth. Make my smooth. Where's my smooth? All right. And I don't know why I did it so well here and then not so well here. Um, but that's what you can do. All right. Let's stick a fork in this one and call it done. And then let's move on to our faces. So the last thing, what I was doing here was I was trying to show off and show how you can, you can start fusing things together and jumping back and forth. But you might notice 
Mudbox doesn't play Blast. There's no animation timeline in Mudbox. So we do want to ship this over into Maya. Okay. Um, you do want to uh, select it. So you have to go to this tab here and hit select. Go ahead and hit save. So when you're ready to turn it in, you have it highlighted. And now we're going to go to file, send to Maya, and select as a new scene. If this doesn't talk to one another, everyone listening? Sometimes on your systems, on your laptops, this is not going to work. Select to a new scene. And then this time I want all the details. So I'm going to say select meshes at current level. And it's going to come in super, super, super facey. If that doesn't work, I'm going to show you another way to import it in. And the other way is on the demo video. So sometimes this doesn't work. Um, in which case, you can export a, oh man, I lost my tails. Um, in which case, you can also export something. Now, uh, notice how detailed that mesh is, right? This is uh, untenable for some things. The skill I was showing you before with the self-portrait, this is what modelers wind up doing because retopo usually doesn't work. Um, there is a, a retopology feature here, um, which also has mixed results. So what lots of people do is probably going to crash. Ready? So what lots of modelers do is when they get a mesh that big and retopo doesn't work, like it's crashing my computer right now. How about that? Um, when that doesn't work, they do the same thing we did with our self portrait but they start using this as the tracing mechanism rather than your portrait. Okay. I'll, I'll get, oh, oh, it did work. Look, but it got rid of all the, I should add, go back and change my details, but it worked better than I thought. So if that does, that's actually, I mean, it killed all the details, but we undo and now we're back to here. All right. When you get to this level, you can either spin it over 120 frames, or you can um, use the camera trick. All right, I also, I also promised in case your laptops are not talking to each other, so every once in a while, this mud box or this Maya doesn't have the connection. My home computer doesn't have the connection. One of your laptops that you're working on might not have the connection, just in the way you set up your download. If you downloaded like Autodesk at a different time, if it's a different version, there's a lot of reasons why this wouldn't ha happen. Like in mine, this thing is just not there. Send a mud box is not there. Okay. So different variations. The other way to get this into Maya is you select it. So you have to go to the select tool. So people are going to forget this. You have to go to the select tool, select it as an object, go to file, and you have to send to Maya, send, oh, no, I'm sorry. You're going to export selected. So this is the other way to get it to Maya. You're going to hit export selection. You can choose an FBX file or an OBJ. FBX or OBJ. Um, this is more for gaming. This is more universal. Like Photoshop can read an OBJ file, right? So either one of these will work. I'll just do OBJ. I'm going to send it to the desktop. I'm going to say transfer lizard, right? Zoop. And now it's on my desktop, which is right here. And I drag it in and boom, there is my lizard. So you can do it one, and I'm going to shrink this down. All right. If Reagan, Deborah, the camera trick wasn't working, just press S and spin it, right? Um, Jamar, since you're not modeling anymore, Jamar, mm -hmm. just 
just instead of building the camera, just select it, press S, mm -hmm. press S, there you go. Go to 120, spin it twice or under rotate Y, type in 720, key selected. So if you don't have the camera spinning trick, or for some people the camera wasn't working, just spin it like that. When you play blast it, feel free to click off of it. Right? And you just right click, play last, and turn that in. So this is going to go under Beast. Yeah, Ben. Uh, can you show me how to do the camera trick? I got the NURB circle and camera, and I just forgot the rest of the stuff. Create, poly oh, create NURB. Here's how to do it. Circle. Oop. Ooh, someone made a vertical one. Yeah. Nice big circle. About right. Yeah, let me do this real quick. Edit. Do me a favor. Make sure you're, you're you're you don't have a green blob. Make sure you click off of it after keyframing it. Um, boom. What was I doing? Let me do one thing. Delete all channels. Excellent. All right. Big rays. And now maybe a little higher. Create camera. Did you do that part? Mm -hmm. Create camera. Pull it over here. Does the camera be bigger? No. Camera's a camera. I mean, it's all to scale, right? Uh, and then to make sure you're looking at it right, you're going to hit panel, perspective, camera one. Maybe look down a little bit more. Then go back to your perspective, hit your four view, make sure it's all lined up. And I'm going to select the camera, shift select the circle, P for parent, then I keyframe the circle. So I'm going to hit right click, rotate Y, key selected, and then go to frame 120. Oops, I wasn't. Go to frame 100, type in 720. Right click, key selected. Is that spinning? Whoop! Wrong way. <laughs> Let's do this. I did the wrong one. Right click, delete. Right click, delete. Here you got channel box. Let's see which way it is. E. It was X. Let's get back to zero. Key selected. 720. Key selected. And panel, perspective, camera. There you go. Same way. And if you did that, if you set up your, you can use this camera for your monster. You can use this camera for your monster head. And remember, for a lesson, what I'm looking for is, did you have some texture? Did you use a stamp? Is there something asymmetrical? Did you? This is probably too much like the original. We all had our crashes. Does it look beyond the original? Beyond that shape? Yes, Ben. What do I keyframe on 120? Uh, the rotation. So 720 degrees. For me, it was Rotate X because yours is probably Rotate Y. Someone who made this NURB changed the settings, and so it came out vertical. For some reason, my, someone changed the settings on that NURB. So I just put 720 in for yeah. Y. Yeah, whichever one is rotating around it. There you go. And I didn't freeze transform. All right. <gasps> 830. Okay, what you're turning in here, I know you, excuse me, right. what you're turning in here, I know we did this for about an hour, hour and a half, so it's not going to be amazing. Let's, let's talk the monster head. So, now that you got a, a better grasp on Mudbox, you're going to make a new scene, file, new scene. Here, I'll wait a second. 
Let me let me wait a second. I'm I'm racing. I like this. I can tell who turned stuff in. Oh, I only got three beasts in. So go ahead and play blast what you have. Does anyone need to see how to play blast it again? Everyone gets stuck. So in mud box, one second, let me, let me get this right. You're gonna make sure it gets selected first by hitting this selection move tab over here. Select it as the object, and you're gonna go to file and choose send to Maya. And then as a bonus, I was showing people how to export it, export that selection as an OBJ or an FBX in case these features don't talk to each other. So sometimes Maya and Mudbox get disconnected. And so you want to just export it. The quick workaround is exporting as an FBX. It'll be pretty much the same thing. Yeah. I have a refresher. Um, so um, did you recommend the uh, send matches at current level or send base matches instead? <coughs> current level. If you send the base message, it'll go back to square one. Okay. And it'll really oversimplify it. Yeah. So you said you wanted the face to be uh, asymmetrical. So I added um, Great. scars on this side, but this Love side. Love it. Okay. Love them. These are great. Turn it in. Do I have to save the Maya file first? Shouldn't have to. For playbacks? No. No, I have to do the camera. Mm -hmm. You do not have to do the camera. You can just keyframe the object. The reason why I did the camera, because we were, we were turning in iterations of it. So the reason why we did the camera for the self-portrait is because we did the eye patch. So if you had to keyframe and then keep deleting the keyframes, that would be a pain in the butt. You're gonna make sure it's selected. I meant to show you some good examples. How 
much longer. Perfect. Download. Oh yeah. Suspicious. Your guys' files are suspicious. Hey, I gave mine a perfectly val valid green card. Hey, yeah. All right, here we go. Let's see. Ooh, a little. I like the head. Who did that one? Reagan? I like, I like. Good job. Nice. Look at that face. Nice work. Ooh, that stamp texture looks really good on the face. Nice, spiky boy. Good work. Another spiky boy. We got the little flange, the little hem the hood. They call that the hood. Perfect. Well, screen recording, which will work. You can give it a twirl. Excellent. Oh. Hey, um, I, I just, I just, I just submitted another assignment. Ooh. Oh, okay. Because, because I kind of like the, uh, the lizard more than the T-Rex in all honesty. Nice. I'll grab it right now. Speed grader. Did anyone else just turn one in last minute? Riley. Another one. Hey. There you go. All right. Now that we've got good practice, we're going to start this now. And let me show you where we're headed. So... Um, same tricks, same tips, everything that you're going to do, everything that we just did, do it again, this time with a head. I want to kind of show you some, so this girl made a monster head. She actually wound up deleting some faces in Maya, um, but this was all done from that base head. Another one, some sort of demon man. Another one. Uh, this girl she sculpted a second piece from a second mesh to make these horns and stuck them in and she did the same thing with the teeth so um she actually did the mesh combined trick so those teeth are actually separate things getting shoved in there and you don't have to be concerned about the topology for that one yet um so just kind of show you some examples and then where we're headed so what we're going to do is these are the final products after so we're going to we're going to UV map them. We're going to give this thing called a spec map, which is how shiny it's going to be in certain places, and a bump map, giving it even more texture. And then we're going to give it blend shapes, and then we're going to add controls. So you're going to see the controls for these things, except in one of them, the kit rendered it out. Um, so there you go. So that was the same swamp person. And so the sliders you see, we're going to, we're going to connect these to the facial features, kind of like a rig. You don't have to render them out, but he did, right? Looks like Tim Burton. Right? So these specs, that was the color map. These extra bits on the horns, that's the bump map. And if you notice, some of the places are shinier and some are duller, that's the specular map. Um, so all these are, um, this is where we're gonna get to. So this is the end game, all right? That's where we're headed. Um, there's going to be, th this is going to be the bigger project for the rest of the semester. It's not the final. I have something more in store for your final. Um, the final is a little bit more fun. So what you're all going to do now is you go to file. You choose new scene. Don't say anything. And then choose the basic head. So everyone's going to start on the basic head. Um, you could, and so I'm going to say extra credit, if I see you starting with a a a cube or a circle, circle, which you could do also if you want, right? Um, so what I liked, what I was doing and practicing, and I think you see it on my video. Um, I use sculpt. I'm going to change the strength, change the the strength and the, the the width of the brush, right? And I can pull. Oops. Undo. Click. And then pull that up. Can it be a, like a deformed person, just sort of a monster face? Any any face you want to do that has that can do facial expressions. So um, this is this is great. Good question. What defines a monster face? I need eye sockets. I need a mouth. 
If your character doesn't have a nose, your character doesn't have a nose. But we need to do transform it into facial expressions. So work with it however you want. Um, use the head or use um, a basic shape here like this. Oops. I'm going to hit Control. I'm going to do a really bad job. Uh -huh. Go to my knife. Make a much smaller knife. And that's just do next week or? You just do next week. We're gonna, you can work in class right now. Oops, and hit Shift D. There we go. Give me a little more. Sh We're already underway, right? Do something better than that. And then Shift for smooth. If I wanted to give them those like Star Wars type horns coming from BL, I'm gonna hit grab, make this bigger. Get stronger. Pull those out. Those forward. You know what I'm talking about? Those things, you know, those aliens that always shift for smooth. All right? I'm gonna grab and pull that in. Pull that back. Shift for smooth. Get smooth back here. Get my stroop smooth stronger. Brush smaller. Even that part, yeah. Oops. Get off that. Ah, oh, come on. Object dupe. Here, dupe. Uh, give him the little Thanos, Thanos chins. Oops. Where's, get on a knife. Smaller, stronger. Give him the little Thanos chins. Yeah. Um, this will need to get a higher subdivision. There. Oops. I got part of the. And shift for smooth. What are those things on Thanos' face? On his chin? Are those scars, or is that how the species goes? Does anyone know? No? No, I, I think that's how the species goes. Oops, that was my knife. It's smooth. Why is my smooth tool so weak right now? There we go. Sculpt. Control. Push this in. Strength. Oh, there, there, get in, 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 in. So you can see where we're going here, right? So uh, do it from, let me do a little in here. This is bothering me, sorry. There you go. So a sculpt with smooth, start making some sort of monster head. How, that took me five minutes with the cube, right? So you can do it with a cube, a sphere. Um, ooh, that was sucked. Um, or you can even start with the blank head. Whichever one you want to do. And get a little creative with it. Uh, ben was asking, can you do something that's copywritten? Yeah, if you wanted to do like a vampire or Frankenstein or swamp thing like that this this the creature from the black lagoon or the blue lagoon no it was black lagoon right black lagoon black lagoon right um blue lagoon's a totally different movie right this is definitely that type of creature you can you can totally emulate something or you can make something original um make an orc make a dragon human hybrid um, anything you'd like. Uh, do make it monstrous. So you got your, you'll have your photo real head, the, your, your self portrait that you did, or you can use this for future projects. So, but we do have to do blend shapes. We'd have to do the set driven key controls. Um, we got to do the UV mapping. Um, the UV mapping part of the UV map will go really fast. It's going to be the Photoshop work that's going to take place, which reminds me to check that. So it is 8:45. Technically, we're supposed to be out of here by 9:15. If you wanted to get started on your monster face now, um, you can. If you wanted to be done, be done. Uh, it is up to you. So if you want, we're going to jump right into UV mapping next week, though. So if you want to use your monster face, because you can get some really cool stuff with the UV mapping stuff that we'll do, right? This really takes it up a notch when you UV map these. Um, so definitely try to get this done. All right.
If you still need Mudbox, either stick around and I can help you download it, um, or you can work on it from here in these labs. Ben, every day during the week, except Fridays? Ben? Mm -hmm. These labs are every day, except Friday? Um, I believe so, yes. Yeah, every afternoon? Okay. Email me when you get stuck, or stay here and work. Have fun. Have fun with it. Oop, that was way too strong. All right, bye. Welcome back from break. Okay. Do something better than that. Excuse me. That was not what I managed to do. Good job. Good job, man. Yes. Needs some help. It's not being colored. P color. P color. Oh, object mode. Select it, um, make it P colored. So go to your object tab. 